I want to explain why this video of Steve Jobs is perhaps his finest moment as a communicator. We all know Steve to be a remarkable speaker, that's uncontested. But this particular video is an example of where all the brilliant qualities of Steve the presenter came together to create a symphony of impact and inspiration. Let's watch the video and then I'll provide some analysis at the end on what is worth highlighting from Steve's presentation and how you can order your thoughts to sound more like Steve. To me, marketing's about values. This is a very complicated world. It's a very noisy world. And we're not gonna get a chance to get people to remember much about us. No company is. One of Steve's most remarkable qualities as a presenter and as an individual that we can start to see illustrated here was his ability to detach himself from his environment and disconnect himself from the judgments of others. He did not care what others thought about him. And he would often say this to many of his managers within the Apple ecosystem. You care too much about what your team thinks about you. And you can see this in his non-traditional odd body language, this half power stance that he has here, and the way that he runs his fingers through his hair throughout this video and puts his fingers in front of his mouth, which typically you don't want to do when you're speaking to an audience. But Steve had this ability to preserve his uniqueness and preserve the ability to tap into his full intellect by not caring what others think. Many times we police ourselves, we police the quality and the caliber of our thoughts that we bring to any scenario because subconsciously and oftentimes consciously we're concerned about what other people are thinking about us. We're focused too much on ourselves and that egoism, as some might call it in an extreme sense, mutes our intellect. And we, you can be full of yourself, and I don't mean full of yourself and unabashedly sharing your thoughts and opinions, but expressing yourself through the body language that we see illustrated by Steve Jobs. You're able to achieve a flow of thought and a comfort on stage that can't help but rub off on your audience. And it creates an atmosphere of learning, of education, and reception like no other. And so we have to be really clear on what we want them to know about us. Now, Apple, fortunately, is one of the half a dozen best brands in the whole world, right up there with Nike, Disney, Coke, Sony. It is one of the greats of the greats, not just in this country, but all around the globe. And, but, but, but even a great brand needs investment and caring if it's going to retain its relevance and vitality. And the Apple brand has clearly suffered from neglect in this area in the last few years. And we need to bring it back. The way to do that is not to talk about speeds and feeds. It's not to talk about MIPS and megahertz. It's not to talk about why we're better than Windows. I want to highlight Steve's usage of the rhetorical device of anaphora. Anaphora is where you use the same phrase or set of words at the beginning of a sentence or clause to create impact and memorability. As Steve says, it's not about speed and fees. It's not about bits and megahertz. It's not about talking about why we're better than windows. This can often create a setup for a solution. In fact, in, in literature, it's often called the anti-solution. You're talking about what not to pursue as a solution, as a means of moving in the right direction, and it creates a balance. Here's what we're trying to avoid, here's what not to do, here's what the right answer is. The dairy industry tried for 20 years to convince you that milk was good for you. It's a lie, but they tried anyway. And <laughs> the sales were going like this. And then they tried got milk, and the sales have gone like this. Got Milk doesn't even talk about the product. Matter of fact, it focuses on the absence of the product. <laughs> but, but, but the best example of all, and, and one of the greatest jobs of, of marketing in the, the universe has ever seen is Nike. Remember, Nike sells a commodity. They sell shoes. And yet, when you think of Nike, you feel something different than a shoe company. 
in their ads, as you know, they don't ever talk about the products. They don't ever tell you about their air soles and why they're better than Reebok's air soles. What does Nike do in their advertising? They, they honor great athletes and they honor great athletics. Notice Steve's usage of questions to prompt thought. He does this often, and if you watch any number of interviews of Steve, he'll often ask himself these questions in real time, or he'll pose the question to his interviewer as a way of often reframing and reinterpreting the question, but from a broader sense, defining what he wants to launch into as a discussion, what he wants the next few questions or minutes or sections of presentation to explain. This is often what's called a macro state of a dialogue, where you have this overarching theme that encapsulates the discussion. It's a wrapper for what you're about to share with your audience. And then in what you're about to share with your audience, you have micro states. You have individual examples or individual sections, but that question is the heading. It's almost the thesis that you're attempting to prove, the idea you're attempting to unpack, and it provides clarity. It focuses all, oftentimes, the undivided attention of your audience on a singular pursuit. And he does this very succinctly and powerfully by asking the question of why Nike is so successful at their advertising. And you'll notice, we'll talk a little bit about this at the end, this is an introduction into, into a new section of this presentation that he's giving, is what is great advertising, and this is where he brings it around to what he wants to pursue with Apple. Apple spends a fortune on advertising. You'd never know it. <laughs> You'd never know it. So, when I got here, we, Apple just fired their agency. They were doing a competition with 23 agencies that, you know, four years from now would have picked one. And we blew that up, and we, <clears throat> We hired Shia Day, the ad agency that I was fortunate enough to work with years ago. We created some award-winning work, including the, the commercial vote of the best ad ever made in 1984 by advertising professionals. And um, we started working about eight weeks ago. And what we, the question we asked was, our customers want to know who is Apple and what is it that we stand for? Where do we fit in this world? And what we're about isn't making boxes for people to get their jobs done, although we do that well. We do that better than almost anybody in some cases. But Apple's about something more than that. Apple, at the core, its core value is that we believe that people with passion can change the world for the better. That's what we believe. And we've had the opportunity to work with people like that. We've had an opportunity to work with people like you, with software developers, with customers who have done it in some big and some small ways. And we believe that in this world. People can change it for the better. And that those people that are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones that actually do. And so what we're going to do in our first brand marketing campaign in several years is to, is to get back to that core value. A lot of things have changed. The market's a totally different place than it was a decade ago. And Apple's totally different. And Apple's place in it is totally different. And believe me, the products and the distribution strategy and the manufacturing are totally different. And we understand that. But values and core values, those things shouldn't change. The things that Apple believed in at its core are the same things that Apple really stands for today. And so we wanted to find a way to communicate this. And what we have is something that I am um, I'm very moved by. It honors those people who have changed the world. Some of them are living, some of them are not. But the ones that aren't, 
as you'll see, you know that if they'd ever used a computer, it would have been a Mac. <laughs> I actually wrote out, and I'll reference this document here in a moment, this entire transcript from this video. And there was very little fat in his sentences. Most of his ideas conveyed were lean and crisp. He did not use words that were scholarly or intellectual or that you might find in a clinical and sanitized MBA paper. In fact, the only times that he referenced technical jargon, bits and megahertz speeds and fees, is when he made a reference to not using those as a means of promoting or marketing a product. But perhaps what is most insightful about this video is that it's a story. Most people don't realize this because it's so subtle, but it's an intelligently designed story. There is very clear progress in the delivery of his ideas, and there's forward momentum in very specific sections and identifiable transitions that lead into a three-part story that Steve is masterfully known for. In fact, one of the authors who wrote, I believe it was a biography on Steve Jobs, I forget the book, I'll link it down below, talked about how Steve in his interviews and his stage presentations would use a three-part story. He would use these, these very distinct narrative vehicles and they were the setup, the conflict, and the resolution. And I actually broke this down into these three sections, but I want to start by introducing the idea of a thought kernel, because this is something actionable that many of you can start using when you're answering questions. If you're at a conference on a panel, start with introducing the thought kernel. What is the thought kernel? It is the core essence of what you want to communicate. Everything you're about to say in the next five minutes, how would you say it in one sentence? Start with that. What is the bottom line? Steve's first sentence is, to me, marketing is about values, which does require some unpacking, but it's a very low resolution understanding and it's an appropriate package and summation of everything he talks about in the next five minutes. And then he goes into the first narrative vehicle. The setup, also known as the platform. The platform is sort of the, the current state of affairs upon which everything builds. How is the world situated right now? What is the current state of events? And this is where he talks about. This is a complicated world. It's a very noisy world, and we're not going to get a chance to get people to remember much about us. The setup is also the part of the story where you introduce the characters, the actors in this particular narrative you're attempting to convey. He talks about Apple. He introduces Nike, Disney, Coke. And then he goes into the second narrative vehicle, the conflict. What are the issues at hand? How has this normal state of affairs, the platform, been upset in some way? And this is where he introduces the protagonist of this grand story, and that is Apple. And he talks about how Apple has suffered from neglect and what we need to do to bring it back. He's identifying the problem. And then he transitions into the resolution where Steve talks about how he's going to successfully resolve this conflict. And he gives a little bit of background on what they've attempted to do. They hired 23 ad agencies and they decided to pull back the reins, wipe the slate clean and start with a very simple idea. And that is, as Steve very aptly says, people with passion are those who change the world. And those that he believes and that Apple supports changing the world for the better. It's a very masterful way of communicating ideas. It's not a scattershot, a shotgun blast of random points that are unordered and incoherent. There's a very clear core thread to this message that Steve is attempting to share. And all of this is a masterful build up to the punchline of the advertisement, which is this idea succinctly condensed down into four or five sentences that says all of this, but in a far more profound and articulate way. And this is why I think this is Steve Jobs' finest moment as a communicator, because he's, he was able to do this in five minutes. And he was able to marry all these brilliant qualities of how he presents into 
one of the most remarkable business videos on the internet. And in fact, most people joke that this video is a five year or four year marketing degree in six or seven minutes, because this is what marketing is about. And Steve Jobs brilliantly illustrates this. 